five years in five minutes. It's a minute. And All right. Welcome back, friends. It is a delight to be here with you. I have been looking forward to this from the moment we shut it down at the end of season one. And in the meantime, I've been composing, doing musical ventures. Um, I've been redoing my website. And I've started a brand new podcast that is called Upstaged. And it deals with the creative process as seen when we are in an adverse situation. Uh, For me, that's Parkinson's disease, and so it's exploring how it is that I create um, with particular focus on music. Everything that I go through in life, I somehow document in music. And this has been a really interesting period for me to listen to a piece of music that's in the podcast episode and then think about what it was I was thinking at that time or how I got inspired to create it. And it's really been a great chance to bring up a number of things that don't come up in this program. So I hope you'll check that out. And it is available wherever you got this one. It's a different feed. It's called Upstaged. Um, And I encourage you to find that. So this season is going to be much like last season in that it's one topic that we exhaust and go through. And the first year, uh, that was about new beginnings. And we were looking to see how people change over time. And these were big changes generally. We were talking about the epiphanies of life that might have you uproot yourself and move across the country or become a missionary or anything like that. It was uh, the unwelcome model where you're told you just don't fit in here anymore. You are done. Uh, The survival model, taking taking the unwelcome model um, that's on the horizon and saying, nope, I'm in charge here, and I'm not going to let you have the satisfaction. But life is also about the smallest changes. And although this isn't a sequel to season one, and you could definitely experience this one on its own, There's a lot of vocabulary that has become part of my parlance, and so I'm going to be using it. And it's not like you can't figure it out contextually, but if any of the things that I'm saying just seem out of left field and I haven't explained them well enough, it's probably because they came from the verbiage of season one. So just keep that in mind, but don't let it scare you off if this is your first episode. Now, the topic for season two is self-deconstructed. It's becoming you. How it is that you made the choices throughout your life that ended up creating the foundation for the way you react to change today, the, the way you interact with people, the friendships you have, how you spend your free time whether you are always trying to get credentials and more experience in your life or you're just satisfied with where you are and happy with uh, with the various aspects of your life. And none of this is to judge, but the more you understand what it is that you do, of course, the better you will know whether you are making the right choices Um, and living a way that you are satisfied with. So there's always exercises in the No Other Life episodes. And I remember saying in the beginning of the fall, you can do them or don't. I don't care. The truth is I 
do care. I would like you to get the benefit from them because every one of these exercises that I have come up with first came to me as a thought experiment in my own mind. And then I said, yeah, that's that's worth honing and trying to figure out how to make it work for other people. So, yeah, I think there's value. Um, we're never going to check your work. You're not going to hand it in to anyone. And chances are you listen to this podcast alone, so you can pause it whenever you want uh, to write things down or just to take a moment to let something sink in. Um, the more actively engaged you are with the various episodes, honestly, I think the better you'll come out at the end. And so we are going to start with an exercise. And here it is. I want us to ultimately, by the end of this one, be getting to um, a realization of what matters to us, about us. So this isn't what matters in the world or what matters in a significant other, any of that. It's what matters about us that we want other people to know. And there's a four-part progression to, to get us to there. Let's think for a minute about writing a memoir. Now, by its definition, a memoir is something that you think about from a particular period, and you've read memoirs about musicians, and it may be from the period that they were on a certain record label, or the certain time that this person was in office, or one very important day. Uh, you could have memoirs for any of these. And let's just say that you were going to write one about your time in a particular job, or the time you knew a particular person, and let's say that it's a span of five years, and for the sake of units being translatable, apples to apples, we're going to say that this became an audio book, and it was a 10-hour audio book. Now, let's think about an autobiography. Now, an autobiography is very rich. It goes all the way back to your birth, interviews, studies about things that you have no way of remembering from your littlest youth. And it's never going to go right to the end of your days because, of course, uh, you're writing it. <laughs> but it will delve into just about everything. So let's say you wrote one of these at age 50. And it is also a 10-hour audiobook. Well... In that first case, the memoir, five years distilled to 10 hours, means that every year is two hours of narrative. The autobiography, on the, on the other hand, is 50 years in 10 hours, so every year that is described gets roughly 12 minutes. Two hours, 12 minutes, very far apart, but both seem constricting and cushy. <laughs> when you think about the next way that you might describe yourself. We've all been in that job interview where they sit you down and say, great to meet you, tell us about yourself. Five minutes. Oh, well, let's say in this case that you are brand new to the work world. You're 25 years old, so you're really only talking about maybe five professional years since college. In five minutes, five years, every year gets one minute, not two hours, not 12 minutes, one minute. And finally, that beloved elevator pitch. This is the one that you use when you're trying to network and grab someone's jacket behind them and just say, please, just 30 seconds. Or 
you start up a new social group or a support group of some kind. You're sitting in a circle and everybody goes around and talks about themselves for 30 seconds. Okay, well, let's say that you're 30 years old, 60 year old. It doesn't matter because 30 seconds is limited. You're, if you divide it by years, you have like between a half a second and two seconds to talk about every year. But that's not realistic. So, of course, you're going to make cuts. And in any one of these four situations, there are opportunities to say, well, there were, time was limited. I couldn't say everything. And therefore, you kind of gloss through some challenging part of your life. Who knows? But when you get through the last two exercises, you're going to have a list of things that you think right now are important to you. And I strongly suggest that you actually do write these down because you're going to want to come back to those at the end of this season and see if things have changed at all. So, let's think about it now. You have the 30-second version of you, and you have the five-minute version of you, and they both have the same assignment, whether it's the job interview or the social group, Tell us about yourself. What makes you tick? What's going on with you? Well, 30 seconds is a twelfth of five minutes, so figure it out. You're going to need to cut. What is it that actually makes it through? What is it that you have to leave on the cutting room floor? And also, think about the entirety of the things that you're choosing. Did you instinctively put them into categories? If you did take this bucket approach, what are they? Your work, your hobbies, your position in your family, or... Did you go with adjectives? I'm kind. I'm compassionate. I tend to get a little harried. I'm overwhelmed. Any one of these does answer the question, what are you all about? Who are you? But when we say, what matters? What matters most to you today about you, where do you land? What do you think of at a time like that? What I want you to do in the time between now and the next episode, and if you're doing this in real time, that gives you about a week. But if you're binging these or just sporadically getting them, I'd say just pause it. And take a moment before you get into it and really begin to think. And if you haven't done it already, try it with the buckets, different categories, and really pay special attention to what it is that stays and what goes. They're all important. Even when you had two hours to talk about a year in the memoir, that was important, but now we're really honing it. We're really getting into what are you doing here? That is what matters the most. So when I say what matters to you, it's the things that are making you get up in the morning. It's the things that are making you stay with the people that you hold dear. Stay in the place and the vocation and the hobbies that you prize most of all. So I want you to sit with these things for the next week, or at least until you hear the next episode, because we're going to draw on that again, and we're going to really start to get into some very useful 
exercises. So it's kind of a short one here today, but I just want you to get that into your mind and start thinking because we're going to get very methodical very quickly about finding why you've made the choices you have made and how it is that you got here from wherever there was. I encourage you to head over to rickseehome.com, as I said, to catch up on anything you've missed before, my old social media posts, uh, various articles and um, entries from the previous and new podcast. And more important than all of that fuffing about heading over to websites and whatnot is to take care of yourself. By taking care of yourself, you're going to do better for the people around you. That's all that we're hoping for here. Take care of yourself, friends. You have no other life 